search for a god, start wars in the name of a god, even create a god if they had to. Hello, my name is Bill Buck. In this report, we are going to present to you what we call the ultimate miracle. You see, when man chose to believe in gods, most of these gods had one thing in common. It was required that they be feared, worshipped, served, and revered. Numerous religions sprang up to serve these gods. Some of the oldest religions still exist today, namely Buddhism, Hinduism, and Shintoism. Some of these religions believe in many gods. For example, a god of fire, a god of water, a god of love, a god of prosperity, and so on. Then came the monotheistic religions, those that believe in one god, all of which are considered major influences in global history and affairs. These are Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, and significantly, they share a common belief in one, one supreme God. Perhaps the best way to portray these is to look at Jerusalem, where all three religions mingle. We have a historical account of biblical and other prophets and the miracles that they are credited with having performed. There was Moses, who we are told talked to God and led the Jews out of bondage and brought them the Ten Commandments. He even parted the Red Sea when pursued by Pharaoh and his troops, according to the Bible. There was Jesus Christ, who is the Son of the living God to Christians. Through him, Christians entered into a new covenant with their Creator. Lastly, there was Muhammad. Muslim history tells us that in Mecca, God revealed to him the Koran, the Muslim holy book, which is recited fervently and followed by one-fifth of the world's population. For many centuries, and in spite of man's experience with religion, there still remain many mysteries. The most baffling and complex mystery of all remains the identity and the concept of this God that man has never seen and yet believes in so religiously. This sea of religious confusion has been swelling all the time. Many religions, all claiming to be right, began to break into sects. During all this time, man was advancing economically, socially, militarily, and intellectually. Man continued to advance technologically at an unprecedented pace. But in terms of religion, he was still in this sea of confusion, often misled by tricksters and deeply disappointed with his unanswered prayers to this unseen God. Disappointment and confusion led many to lose their belief. Agnosticism and atheism have become widespread. Many now openly reject or at least question the existence of this God who has been so popular throughout the ages. The theory of Darwin became the accepted opinion of many scientists and scholars who were able to draw supportable conclusions from the proof and arguments presented. But now, most scientific and religious thinkers realize that there are deeper questions. So, where does that leave us? Are there any real solutions to this religious dilemma? On the one hand, man cannot accept the illogical practices that religion dictates to him. Yet, by denying God, Man still doesn't find the answers to some of his most burning questions, such as, who am I? Why am I here? Is there a God? What is the purpose of life? Just when man's tolerance to manual labor reached a limit and the industrial revolution lay around the corner, now an intellectually enlightening revolution seems to be around the corner. Previous generations were converted to believe in God by means of miracles. However, modern man cannot believe in God because of these. He has watched men walk on the moon. He is presented daily with the latest technological marvel. He has come across too many false claims, fake miracles and fake prophets. He has become very cynical, especially when it comes to ancient myths and beliefs. With some arrogance, 
He believes that he knows more than his forefathers, let alone those ancient reporters of fantastic events. He wonders what they would have thought of some of today's miracles. Today's man needs something substantial. He needs an ultimate miracle. All the miracles that were supposed to have converted man over the ages were limited to a particular geographical location or a time period. By definition, an ultimate miracle would be something that is perpetual, not limited to a certain century or geographical location. It would be for all of the people to see all of the time. It would be something that is physical, touchable, examinable, verifiable, and irreputable. A few years ago, noted scientist and television personality Carl Sagan, in his best-selling novel, talked about a mathematically coded message from outer space. On page 431, the author states, My fondest hope for this book is that it will be made obsolete by the pace of real scientific discovery. Well, it seems that Carl Sagan's fondest hope has come true. Research over the past few years has uncovered just such a mathematical code in a document that is over 1,400 years old. There are other miraculous aspects to this document. For instance, only in the past 20 years has science been able to witness the development of the fetus in the very early stages. However, 1400 years ago, the development of the fetus in the first 28 days had already been documented, and with such graphic accuracy that it left Dr. Moore, chairman of the anatomy department at the University of Toronto, utterly amazed. For at this stage, the embryo is only about one-tenth of a millimeter long and would appear like a dot to the human eye. To discern its shape would require a powerful microscope. However, microscopes were not developed until the 17th century. And yet, 1400 years ago, we find the following. Thereafter, we created of the drop a thing which clings, a leech-like structure. Dr. Moore confirmed that the embryo does in fact cling to the wall of the uterus. Another passage describes the stages of fetus development. God makes you in the wombs of your mothers in stages, one after another, within three veils of darkness. Dr. Moore confirmed the accuracy of this description also. He explained that the three veils could reasonably be interpreted to mean the mother's abdominal wall, the wall of the uterus, and the amniochorionic membrane. It goes on. We've all heard about the Big Bang Theory, but who would expect to find an account about the Big Bang Theory 1400 years ago? But there it is. Do the disbelievers not realize that the heavens and the earth used to be one entity? Then we parted them. The separation process resulted in the formation of multiple worlds. Mention of these worlds is made several times in the document. Also, it would seem that the modern discovery of bridges of matter, which are present outside organized astronomical systems, is referenced in the verse which reads, God is the one who created the heavens, the earth, and what is between them. Today, we will only preserve your body to set you up as a sign for subsequent generations. Indeed, most people are heedless of our signs. Miraculously, it seems that the Egyptians were exclusively gifted with the science of mummification. In 1898, Laure discovered the mummified body of Ramses II of Thebes in the Valley of Kings, where it had lain untouched for 3,000 years. He had it transported to Cairo, where it may be seen to this day. The medical study of the mummy of Merneptah, pharaoh of the Exodus, has yielded further useful information on the possible cause of this pharaoh's death. The lack of signs of deterioration of the body proves that the body did not stay in water for a prolonged period of time. And in the heavens, for many centuries it was believed that the moon had its own light. Science discovered not too long ago that the moon really did not generate its own light, but acted only as a reflector of the sun's rays. God is the one who made the sun luminescent and the moon a light, and he designed its phases to provide you with a timing device. God did not create all this in vain. God is the one who created the night, the day, the sun, and the moon. Each one is traveling in an orbit with its own motion. 
Today, it is known how the celestial organization is balanced by the position of stars in a defined orbit, and how the interplay of gravitational forces is related to their mass and speed of movement, each with its own motion. Sir Francis Drake proved the Earth to be round when he sailed around it in 1597. Are you more difficult to create than the heaven that he built? He raised its masses and perfected it. He made its night dark and its morning visible. Thereafter, he made the earth egg-shaped. That was written almost a thousand years before Columbus. We know now that the earth's atmosphere acts as a filter to prevent harmful radiations from reaching the surface. Short wavelengths like X-rays and ultraviolet rays are filtered out at high altitudes. Protection from these rays is vital to the existence of life on Earth. And we made the sky a protected ceiling. Then there is the affirmation of the modern idea that the origin of life is aquatic. And we made water a requisite for every living thing. Water is the simplest chemical compound of importance to all living things. Most organisms consist of 50 to 95 percent water. Scientists know that absolutely every living entity known to man requires water for its existence. Many properties of water make it essential to life's processes. Its ability to dissolve a great variety of substances is vital because most chemical reactions within organisms can occur only in a water solution. Take the field honeybee, busy bringing in nectar from flowers. On entering the hive with a full honey sac, which is an enlargement of the esophagus, the field bee regurgitates the contents into the mouth of young workers, called house or nurse bees. These, in turn, deposit nectar in a cell and carry out the tasks necessary to convert the nectar to honey. This we have known for about 80 years. And your Lord inspired the bee. Build homes in the mountains and the trees, and what the people build for you. Then eat from all kinds of crops and obediently follow the designs of your Lord. Out of their bellies comes a liquid of various colors, wherein there is healing for the people. This should be a sign for those who reflect. Remember, this statement was made 1,400 years ago. How in the world could somebody have known 1,400 years ago that honey came from the belly of the bee? This document also claims that there is a healing property in honey. Honey does, in fact, have mild antiseptic properties. The Russians used honey to cover their wounds in World War II. The wounds retained an amount of moisture and left very little scar tissue. Because of its density, no fungus or bacteria could grow in the wound. It is also known that if a person suffering from allergies from a certain plant is given honey produced from that plant, that person builds up certain resistance to the allergy. One thousand years before the discovery of the circulation of blood, and roughly 13 centuries before it was known what happens in the intestine to ensure that the organs are nourished by the process of digestive absorption, we find a verse in the document. From between the urine and the blood comes pure, delicious milk. Only recently was it found that from what the cow eats, there is a separation of nutrients into the blood and the urine, and the remainder ends up as milk. Progress in botany 1,400 years ago was nowhere advanced enough for it to establish as a rule that plants have both male and female parts. Nevertheless, we read in the document, God is the one who sent water down from the sky and thereby brought forth pairs of plants, each separate from the other. Today we know that fruit comes from plants that have sexual characteristics, even when it comes from unfertilized fruits like bananas. Of all fruits, God placed on the earth two of a pair. This document stated to early man the remarkable premise that mountains move like the clouds. We know this to be true now, since the earth rotates around its axis and around the sun. But to an ancient, what could be more contradictory to the obvious 
than that mountains move. And yet, when you look at the mountains, you may think that they are standing still, but they are moving in the same manner as the clouds. Such is the creation of God. We know now of continental drift, of folding, which forms mountain ranges. The Earth's crust is like a solid shell on which we can live, while the deeper layers are hot and fluid. Have we not made the Earth an expanse and the mountains stakes? The stake-like stability of the mountains is linked to the folding phenomenon in that the folds provide the foundations for the reliefs that form the mountains. From this aspect, they are indeed like tent stakes driven deep into the ground. He makes his chest straightened like one who climbs towards the sky. Fingerprinting became a scientific method of identification in the 1880s with the research of Sir Francis Galton. Galton calculated mathematically that no two persons could have exactly the same fingerprint patterns. We can even reconstruct All of these scientific phenomena have been taken from the same book. Other examples contain infinitely more precious data, which directly relate to facts discovered by modern science. But it took modern computers to discover them. It is only now that the numerous verses of this text have finally become comprehensible. Dr. Maurice Bacay, an eminent French scientist, says that it is impossible to explain how a text produced 1400 years ago could have contained ideas that have only been discovered in modern times. Many other scientific phenomena, the barrier between salt and fresh water, the branch-like progression of combustion, all were mentioned 1400 years ago. In a notable recent experiment conducted by NOVA, it was found that at the exact moment of death, there is a slight weight loss in humans, but not animals. This document states that at the moment of death, God takes the soul away. And now we come to the most incredible significance of these discoveries. Remember we said that modern man needs an ultimate miracle to release himself from the bondage of religious frustration and confusion about his creator. Well, it so happens that this ultimate miracle does exist in this document, the identity of which we are about to reveal. This ultimate miracle exists in the form of a scientifically proven mathematical code that is touchable, examinable, verifiable, and utterly irrefutable. Not only does it prove that the author of this divine document is God Almighty, but it also serves as the first physical evidence for the very existence of God. And it serves as a means for preservation for the document itself, so that the reader knows that every word, indeed every letter, is from God Almighty. This document is the Koran. And the ultimate miracle is the perfect and unchallengeable mathematical code. This mathematical code, this signature of the Creator, has always been here in the Koran for all to see. But only recently was it revealed, and then only with the help of a modern computer, by Dr. Rashad Khalifa, the Imam or Minister of the Mosque of Tucson. Briefly, let me explain. The Quran consists of 114 chapters. 29 of these chapters are prefixed with letters that remained mysterious for 1400 years. Nobody knew what they meant until now. Before we go into details of this, let us look at a simple example that will allow us to realize the magnitude of this miracle. Take a simple sentence like, Jack and Jill went up the hill. There are seven words and 24 letters in this sentence, and this is called the simple mathematical structure of this sentence. Now, let us try and change this mathematical structure, but still try and convey a specific meaning in good English. Let us say we want to convey the same meaning with a sentence containing seven words and 26 letters. We must pad two letters in Jack and Jill went up the hill. In trying to do this, we soon see that the word Jack and the word Jill cannot be changed. The word over cannot be substituted for up because it conveys a separate meaning. Similarly, the word the cannot be replaced by a because a hill refers to any hill. 
In other words, it becomes pretty difficult to change the mathematical structure of a simple sentence and still have an accurate and acceptable statement in English. Now, how about if we try and group sentences that convey specific meanings into a mathematical pattern, not only controlling the count of total letters, but also the count of specific letters within words. Suppose we want to take Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water and change the total number of A's plus the total number of I's to nine instead of eight. There are seven words containing the letters A and I that make perfect English and cannot be changed. So we can only try and change the rest of the words, but this will again convey a different meaning to the sentence. It quickly becomes apparent that changing this structure to fit a pattern is almost impossible for just one sentence. Prepare for the shock. The document, the Quran, contains an exquisitely sophisticated control of letters across chapters, within chapters, in combination of letters between words, in total number of sentences, in total number of words, all interlocking with one another, rendering it impossible to duplicate, even with the most powerful computers. Yet, it remains very simple to understand. For example, 29 chapters, roughly 160,000 letters, are prefixed by mysterious letters. Chapter 50 starts with just Q. Chapter 2 has A-L-M. Chapter 19 has five letters as a prefix, K-H-Y-A-S. Please note that we have chosen English equivalents of the Arabic letters for simplicity of illustration. It was found that the letter Q occurs in chapter 50 exactly 57 times, or 19 times 3. The A's, L's, and M's in chapter 2 occur a total of 9,899 times, and so on, without a single exception in all the initial chapters, with the occurrences in multiples of the number 19. At the same time that the A's, L's, and M's are controlled in seven chapters that have ALM as a prefix, the A's and the L's are part of the Arabic word for God, the occurrence of which is also being controlled, as you will soon see. At once we realize that there is a deliberate superhuman design that binds the book's chapters, verses, words, even letters. For if one letter was changed, deleted, or added, the whole system collapses. And the fact that this system was discovered 1400 years after its creation proves that it has been perfectly preserved. The foundation of this mathematical code is the opening statement. In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful, and this contains exactly 38 alphabets or 19 times 2. In the language of the Quran, Arabic, it contains exactly 19 alphabets and four words. These four words, namely, name, God, most gracious, and most merciful, appear in the whole book 19, 2698, 57, and 114 times, respectively. All these are multiples of 19. The total number of verses are 6,346. The total chapters are 114. Again, multiples of 19. We are beginning to see that this unique code must have been pretty difficult to construct. On it are 19. Indeed, by the moon, by the night as it passes, by the morning as it shines, this is one of the greatest miracles. Greatest miracle indeed. And now we realize that 19 is the Creator's signature on everything He created. For example, you and I, have 209 bones in our bodies, 19 times 11. A full-term fetus remains in the mother's womb 266 days, 19 times 14. The sun, the moon, the earth line up in the same position every 19 years, and on and on and on. The viewer may wonder, why 19? Well, using our ancestral system of numerology, the Arabic and Hebrew word for one has a value of 19. And this is what the message of Quran is. One. One God and one brotherhood of nations under God. The Quran was written under God's direction. One thing is clear. No human being could have written such a complicated and perfectly mathematically coded text. Not then, 
Not now, even with the aid of computers. One of the most important functions of the Quran's mathematical code is that it proves and authenticates by physical evidence all the miracles of the previous prophets and messengers. Moses parted the Red Sea. Jesus revived the dead and healed the hopelessly blind and the leprous and so on. Now these miracles are mathematically composed within the Quran and proven by this code to be true. God was the witness. His words are divine. And what he has proven by means of the ultimate miracle is that the Quran is indeed his word, the word of God. Therefore, let us look to it to answer some of our most crucial questions, such as why are there famines, disasters, and diseases? And what is the overall purpose and meaning of life? And what of peace, that elusive dream of the righteous, universal man? Given now that the message of the Quran is one, one God, one brotherhood, think of it. All the power and love in the universe in one supreme being, who has assured us that he not only exists, but communicates without question to those who believe and seek out the truth. His laws and commitment. Imagine what can be achieved by following his laws and directions.